Tonight, Paul and myself are out testing the latest uh, thermal imaging weapon scopes from a company called Optics, the recogniser and identifier. And we're here on a farmer's land in southwest Scotland to check out the population of rabbits um, in one of the neighbouring fields and to put these two devices through their paces. So let's see how we get on. Welcome to the Night Vision Show. Things have moved on a bit in the world of night vision recently. At Scott Country, we've just taken delivery of two new thermal imaging weapon sites. These are dedicated weapon sites, and they're using a thermal imager instead of a night vision image intensifier. I do for use during the day and at night, and they'll detect objects through things like foliage, snow, rain, fog, um, absolutely ideal for all types of shooting. Um, we've got two models. This is the optics identifier. 1200 metres detection range. Um, it has white hot black hot, um, a high resolution sensor. The actual display screen um, has a resolution of 852 by 600. So um, in terms of image resolution, there's nothing will come close in the market in terms of digital night vision. But again, this is thermal imager. This is the optics identifier. So it has a detection range of 1200 meters. So you'll detect objects up to 1200 meters, um, a man-sized object. So it's going to be ideal for foxing and vermin control with a good recognition distance out to five, 600 meters. Nothing will come close in the market to this. It uses a thermal image and microbolometer. So images will display with a white hot or a black heat, depending on your selection. It has various different functions, including um, automatic calibration, one touch button to actually capture an image of what you're looking at. It's obviously got a video output where you can record footage to something like the Yukon NPR, but for in the field, you want to take a shot of what you're looking at, press the button, it'll actually take a photograph and store it into its built-in memory. So as this is the first thermal imaging weapon site in the market, we went out in the field to put it to its test. So we, we went out, filmed a few rabbits um, out to, to where the fox cubs were to have a better look at the, where the cubs are. And we just did some general filming as well, which you'll see a bit later on. So, you know, where do we go? Um, digital night vision has been the latest incarnation. It's gone from there. Image intensifiers have got up to Gen 3 image intensifiers now. And now we have thermal weapon sites. The difference between a thermal weapon site and a normal night vision device is you're not using infrared illumination. There's no infrared IR source coming from this. It's purely seeing the, the heat from the object. And in terms of image quality and resolution, it's incredible. We always compare thermal images to the Pulsar Quantum HD30S, which is a handheld device. This is on a different planet. So this is the optics identifier. So this is the top end model, which is a 1200 meters detection range. First thing that strikes you about these devices are um, they're, they feel quality. You know, you're picking up something that's solidly built and, and well made. It's using a magnesium alloy shell. So it's not like a plastic or a, you know, a, a glass fiber shell. This is tough and durable. It feels like a quality optics that one of the, you know, one of the German manufacturers would make. The device is powered by um, a choice of batteries. You actually have two carriers here. You can have your normal 18650 batteries, or they also supply you with a carrier for taking other batteries, such as CR123s. And one thing with optics, you get loads of accessories, things like lens pens with them, various battery options. Um, yeah, they're packed with accessories, and they come in a real good case as well. You have a normal cloth canvas case, and you also get a pelletite tactical case as well. You know, at the end of the day, this is a big investment in one of these devices, so you want to be able to look after it. The optics identifier has a huge piece of germanium here, and it's that that gives us a detection range. You know, a detection range of up to 1,200 metres is a phenomenal distance at night. Now, no one will ever expect to shoot anything like that. Most people, particularly, you know, using a, a small carbon centre fire, won't be shooting much further than 200 metres. This will provide a crystal clear image at that distance and further. When we were testing it, you detect a heat source at 1,200 metres away. You wouldn't have an idea of what it is. You know, you couldn't tell if it's a sheep, a fox, a badger, or a Volkswagen Polo. You know, you see a heat source. Um, at four to 500 metres, we could identify objects crystal clear with this. There was no guessing what something was. You know, the first thing, when I first heard about thermal weapon sites, my thing was, if you're looking at a lower entry level device, are people going to be sometimes confused? Is it a sheep? Is it a fox? Could it be a dog? You know, they, they might not be able to, you know, judge safely the shot. With this, we think, um, in terms of performance, certainly at 400 metres, it's, it's better than night vision. The image quality is phenomenal.
Nice and easy controls, so you have three buttons on the top here. Now you've got your menu, you access the menu by holding down both buttons, and you have a, a button here for switch between black hot and white hot. You can enter the menu system and control things like the brightness. You can choose from five different reticles. The reticles have everything from a standard prefix crosshair through to a target mill dot reticle, which we found was perfect. You can switch between black hot and white hot. You can also change the reticle from white to black. So sometimes if you're using the black hot and you have the black reticle, you'd like the reticle to pick it a bit clearer. Switch to white reticle. Yeah, it's got everything you ever need. Really, really easy to set up. You zero it like a traditional rifle scope bring up your reticle, change your point of impact as you're firing shots, N nothing difficult there. Optical focus at the front by this big knurled wheel and your diopter focus here. The eyepiece is great, it has a shuttered eyepiece, so when you look through it, it looks like a, a camera shutter, it opens as you press your eye to it and then it, it closes again when you pull your eye away from it. Keeps any dust, keeps any light spill from illuminating your face, they've really thought of everything. The reason they thought of everything is Optics is a big um, military manufacturer. They make thermal weapon sites for the military um, at the very, very highest level. These are their UK consumer weapon sites. Um, in terms of performance, the refresh rate is fantastic. There's no image lag with them. You can pan a field, you can look at an object running across a field and it'll provide a nice crystal clear image. Device also has a video port on the side where you can connect it up to something like a Yukon NPR and record footage from it. You also get leads with your kit to connect it to your PC, so if you have any firmware updates from Optics, you can upload any firmware to the device. You can also capture still images by a quick press of that button there, you'll capture a still image, you can download that to your PC as well. So say you see something interesting out in the field or you want to take a, a, an image of something you're about to shoot, you can take an image of it and then download it later. Optics also have a device called the Recognizer. Now, first thing it strikes you is it's much smaller, it's a lot more compact, but it's designed as a handheld thermal imager that you can quickly and easily attach onto your weapon site. So I'm using an airsoft rifle here at the moment just to demonstrate. So there, a couple of seconds and we'll put it onto the device. This is a lot smaller, a lot more compact. The detection range is up to 460 meters. So, you know, perfect for a shorter range work. You'll be able to use it for vermin control foxing, certainly out beyond mo what most people would comfortably shoot. Um, resolution of the device, 852 by 600 display and 384 by 28 pixel microbolometer. So the image quality is fantastic. You can use it during the day as well as at night. It's not an image intensifier, it's a thermal imager. So it'll detect a, a white heat source or a black heat source. So you can use it for shooting during the day as, in, as it moves into the evening for foxing, you can carry on shooting as well. There's nothing to damage you with any bright light sources. So what's the difference between a thermal imager and a night vision device? Well today it's absolutely pouring with rain. Should this be night conditions and you're using your image intensifier, your um, IR illuminator will be scattering light everywhere. So you'll see real lots of noise, lots of blemishes in the, the image. And to be honest, in, in heavy rain conditions, you'll really struggle to see anything. With a thermal imager, it doesn't matter. It could be snowing, we could be standing in fog, we could be standing in you know, heavy, heavy rain. The thermal imager doesn't, it's not affected by that. Nothing impedes it in terms of rain and snow or foam. Foliage, you can see through everything. So if you're shooting foxes and you've got something gone into cover, you can pick up the heat source. Shooting rabbits and long grass, not a problem at all with this. It runs on two CR123 lithium batteries, which will give a runtime of up to about three hours. You have a simple on-off button here, press it on, it boots up very, very quickly, turn it off. Lens cap in the front, and your optical focus is here. You have a knurled system at the front. Your diopter focus to the rear. You also have a series of three buttons on top. So you have your standard button for entering the menu, you have switching between black hot and white hot, and you have automatic calibration, so you can turn off automatic calibration. By holding down two buttons, you enter the menu system where you can set up things like the image brightness, you can turn off automatic the calibration of the device, and you can also zero the device like a traditional rifle scope. Obviously you have your reticle, you adjust your up, down, left, right, and you zero the device traditionally. On the opposite side of the device, you have a port here, which is a multi-function port. You have a video lead comes with this, which you can connect up to an NPR to output a video source. So when we were out shooting at night, we were using it to film footage. Um, you can also connect it to your PC for any firmware updates that come from optics. Um, as well, because the device is an image capture facility, you can download any still images you've taken. The device attaches to your weapon using a standard weaver or Picatinny rail system. You can quickly and easily detach it from your rifle and use it handheld. Um, optics are also going to do some various base fit, and so if you have a particular rifle, uh, particularly a common rifle, like a Remington, Saco, or Tika, we'll be able to supply actual bases so you don't need a conversion reel. You'll be able to just attach these right onto your rifle. 
So there we have it folks, this is the future night vision. We've got two thermal imaging weapon sites here for two budgets and for two applications. A shorter range one with a detection range of up to 460 metres, this is the recognizer, and then we have the identifier which is the detection range up to 1200 metres. They're being officially launched at the CLA Game Fair in July where you can come along to our stand and you can try all these devices. Um, they'll be on the shelf sometime towards the end of June. We look forward to letting you try them. As well as thermal images, of course, optics also do a range of um, image intensifier devices. So this is a Firefly 3. We have the Firefly 3, 4 and 6, which has 3 times, 4 times and 6 times optical magnification. They come with a range of image intensifier tubes from the top end Gen 3 to the new USV tubes, which are ultra sensitivity vision tubes, as well as Gen 2 and then the Photonist devices through XD4 and XR5s. Like the thermal devices, the Firefly is, is, is a quality product. Again, it's made of a magnesium alloy. There's no glass fibre plastics here. It's all tough, real durable. Feels like a German rifle scope. Um, easily set up, you've got your traditional windage and elevation. Um, this device here has the new uh, USV ultra sensitivity tube, which uh, in comparison with something like an XD4, for less cost, is on a par. Depending on what image intensifier tube you go for, Firefly claim detection ranges of up to 1200 metres. 1200 metres is an awful long way at night and even the thermal imaging devices were struggling at that. To be honest with you, um, we're going to be testing this out in the field later on. You'll see it coming up further in the night vision show, so we'll put it to the test. But, you know, we know the tubes that the, the company uses, we know the, how sensitive they are. You'd expect 300 to 400 metres detection with this comfortably. Um, whether it gets to the distances they're claiming, We'll yet to see. Certainly you're never going to identify something at that distance, but we'll be putting it through the test. For 2014, Nightsight have brought three new models to the market. There's the Nightsight Eagle, which is a 500 metre detection range and build as the long range strike. The Night Sight Wolf that I have in my hand here, which is the mid-range strike with a detection range of 300 metres. And then the smallest, the Night Sight Viper, which is a detection range of 100 metres and is designed as the short-range strike model. Night Sight, if you know, has a simple system. This is the anatomy of the Night Sight, where you have your Eagle mounted here in this dummy rifle. You have here your infrared illumination. You have your screen where you view the perceived image. Now you have a knob on top, which is your IR brightness control. Whereas before you had the device where you could actually turn the device on and off here, you actually have a button here which you turn and adjust the power of the infrared. So if you're shooting at short range, you can adjust the power right down. If you're shooting at long range, you can adjust the power right up and every step in between. The image is viewed on the screen here. And there is also a camera which attaches to a rubber tube to your eyepiece or your rifle scope. So the night sight sees whatever you see. The camera films through here. It illuminates infrared and you see what your scope sees. So if you're shooting or scanning a field, for example, you'll see on here. The reason there's the different models are there's different detection ranges. People who are shooting centre fire for foxing, for example, will require further detection range. They want to scan a field up to 500 metres away, for example, and be able to detect something there. This will do the job for that. The Wolf is the mid-range, which is ideal from everyone from 178 HMR to Rimfire, people out shooting rabbits, um, other ground game, um, your foxes at mid-range, the Wolf will do the job up to 300 metres. And then there's the Viper, which is designed for the air gun market. This is ideal up to 100 metres, shooting rats and sheds, pigeons, um, you name it, it's, it's absolutely spot on for that. The Night Sight system basically consists of a camera which attaches to your scope tube using a rubber device. You have two of these with a night sight, so depending on what size your eyepiece or your rifle scope is, you can, you've got a good choice. They'll stretch quite large as well, so going between a small, um, you know, for example, a 4 by 40 right up to something like a 16 power for night force for long range stuff. Um, you have two mounts, one for an inch tube, one for a 30 mil tube, and these are attached to the device um, and you then fit it to your rifle scope. So essentially you bolt the ring on here and then you attach the device to here. You have two options of battery. Um, with the Eagle, you get the standard high power lithium battery, which will give up to 27 hours runtime. Yep, 27 hours, phenomenal runtime. You also have the smaller option, which you get with the wool for the Viper. You can also order the wool for the bigger battery pack, should you wish, and you'll get about 10 hours runtime from that. It's a really, really small battery pack. You can attach it to the side of your rifle scope, should you wish, top of the unit 
and it will give enough run time for a night out. The Nixite camera has been improved for 2014. It's now an awful lot more sensitive, so it'll detect a lot further, it'll provide a much clearer image at a much better resolution. On the device you have an AV, which is for outputting to something like the Yukon NPR if you want to capture video, and you have the NS port, which is the port that takes the feed from the, um, from the camera and outputs it to the night vision screen. You now have a, a power port here for plugging in your battery pack, so again you can either go for the high capacity battery pack or the lower capacity battery pack. And now you have an on-off button, whereas the on-off button before was on the top of the device, you now have the on-off button here, so you can turn the camera on and off and power the device up or down. On top of the device you have a knob now, which used to be the on-off switch, that's now using to control the infrared illumination, so you can control from high power infrared right down to low power infrared. So if we were doing this at night you'd see the illumination increasing or decreasing, really good for short range work or for example if you want to shoot long range you can scan a field to a long distance. You see here there's three screen units, now these encompass the IR illuminator units which you'll see at the front, there's three different sizes. From your left to my right, there's the Eagle, the larger one, the Wolf, the mid-range one, and the Viper, the short-range one. Obviously, the infrared illuminators are much larger, and there's more of them. On the devices, you'll also see they're each branded Viper, Wolf, and Eagle. On this dummy rifle, you'll see here we have the high-capacity lithium-ion battery pack. So now we're just going to fit the night sight system like we would in the field. So you have your um, rubber adapter which attaches to the IPC or rifle scope. So this just forms over the top of the rifle scope and you push it in place. You then have the camera, which note in the way the logo goes up, you push it into place here. You have the screen system which slots onto the mount. We've got an inch tube rifle scope here, so we're attaching it to the rifle scope tube. And tighten up the thumb wheel. We're then plugging in the night sight viewer and plugging in the battery pack. So push button and you'll get the screen come on and you can adjust the optics obviously to make sure that everything's aligned properly. And there we have it, ready to go. This is a parallax adjustable scope so we can adjust the reticle nice and sharp. Um, you can adjust the infrared brightness by the knob on the top of here and you're ready to go. So there you have it folks, that's the new range of night sight, night vision add-on kits, which are available now from scottcountry.co.uk. You have the Eagle seen here, which is the long range strike offering 500 meters detection. You have the Wolf, which is the mid range strike offering up to 300 meters detection. And then you have the Viper, which is the short range strike offering up to 100 meters detection. Prices start for the top of the range night sight Eagle at 849.99, down to the Wolf at 649.99, down to the Viper at 449.99. All these products are available to buy online at scottcountry.co.uk or why not take advantage of our demo service where you can pay for one of these units. We send out a dedicated demo unit to you which you can try at home for seven days. Should it not be suitable, you send it back to us. We would offer you a refund minus a small admin fee or we would send you a brand new unit. Find out more at scottcountry.co.uk. Well folks, that's it for another episode of the Night Vision Show. You've been able to see the new thermal weapon scopes in action, the very first in the UK, and uh, we'll be, we've been doing more tests on these products and a few more uh, in the coming months ahead. So please stay tuned for the next episode of the Night Vision Show.